Maybe you have one pose that you've always wanted to do. And little by little, you keep on working on it and it slowly evolves. And maybe you're not to the final form of the pose, but through all of your practice, you start to appreciate all the nuances of the pose, how many pieces there are to the, the puzzle of the pose. That's the way it is with splits or Hanumanasana. This is a pose I've worked on for years and feel like I've just started the practice. Please join me in this practice where we'll be working on lengthening the quads, lengthening the back side of the legs so that we can get our legs ready to do full splits. For this practice, we'll be using blocks and a strap, and if you don't have those, you can improvise in the poses. We'll start lying down. As you lie on your mat, just attune to your breath. In this practice, we'll start with a little tuning inside. We'll start with breath work and moved into the technical details of the pose. It's always best to work on this pose when your muscles are ready for it. So this is not a morning practice. This is a time where you've worked out or you've been walking around and your leg muscles are not quite so tight. So draw your right foot really close to your cheek. And as you do, see if you can just stretch your right knee away from your waistline. It's a way to just bring your awareness to the front side of the thigh. And as you sneak your right foot a little bit closer to your buttocks, just breathe in deep and breathe out long. Usually we end our practice in supine poses, lying down, but in this practice, let's just bring our awareness to the breath and just take this time to really get into your body. Just enjoy your breath here. Keep on reaching the right knee away from your face. Get as much length there as possible. Now release your right foot and place it comfortably down. Take your left foot just a little bit closer to your left cheek. And from there, just reach the left knee and you'll feel a nice stretch on the front side of the leg. And breathe in, breathe out long. I've got my foot tucked under for this. And some of you are very flexible and might be able to have your toenails pressing. And just find out what works for you. And as long as you're getting just a bit of a thigh stretch and you're taking your attention to your breath. Just feel the ribs move against the mat. Keep on reaching the left knee to get that nice stretch to the top of the left thigh. Now release the left foot so that you're in a more comfortable position. And as you do, now that you've stretched both, both of the thighs, park your elbows down with the hands in this robot form Lift your pelvis up so that you come to Satubandha Sarvangasana, this bridge pose, literally the construction of a bridge. See if you can get your bridge to really expand nicely. And we're doing that by getting a nice lift of the heart, lift of the pelvis, legs are active, the feet are pulling in toward your heart. Enjoy a nice ease to your in-breath and out-breath. And now slowly release. Take your right ankle to the outside of the left knee and place your hands just right up below the pant leg crease there. Just 
Encourage your right knee to move away from your heart. So with the hands, you're just giving a little pressure to the top of the thigh there. And attune to your breath. You can release your right foot. Take your left ankle just to the outside of your right knee. And same thing, just encourage, coax the left thigh to move just a little bit more fully here. As you take your attention to your breath, you can close your eyes. Just come into this deeper awareness, the legs of the hip area, the low back. can release your left foot down. Now roll over to your belly. And what's on your belly? Come up to a sphinx pose. Draw your heart forward. Now bend your right knee. Take your left hand at the diagonal so that the left hand is pointing toward the right corner of your mat. And see if you can hold on to the right shin or the right ankle or the top of the right foot and just reach your right foot back so that you engage nicely. Now slowly draw your right foot just a little bit closer to your buttocks cheek. So you give yourself another thigh stretch here. We did this while we were on our back and now we're on our belly doing it. Now release your right foot. Come back to the Sphinx pose with the forearms pressing down. Hug the elbows back, reach your heart forward. Now take your right hand and just point it toward the left corner of your mat. Bend your left knee. Hold on to your left ankle or your shin bone or the top of the foot and just reach the foot back to open the chest nicely. Now take your left foot just a little bit closer to the outside of your left buttocks. Just give yourself a nice thigh stretch there. And don't go too deep as you just, just work on the breath, staying in the pose for a little bit longer. Now release your left foot, lie on your back again, bend your knees, plant your feet, take your strap, and if you don't have a strap, we can improvise again. If you don't have a strap, you can interlace your fingers and put them right at the belly of the hamstring and reach your right leg up. If you do have a strap, take the strap right around the base of the toes and reach your right foot up. So we give a nice stretch to the top of the thigh. Now with the right heel lifting up, your right toes spreading, your right toes drawing toward your face so that you've got a nice stretch to the back of the leg. See if you can keep that and just draw your right toes just a little bit further so you start to feel the stretch on the back side of the leg. You're just holding the pose, breathing in and breathing out long. Just enjoy a nice ease here as you hold the pose. Now take the strap off the right foot and release the right leg down and straighten the left leg as well. And just see if you can tell any difference between the legs. Maybe that leg that you just worked, the right leg, you feel just a, perhaps a little bit longer, or maybe you feel the pelvis is a little bit more secure on the right side, a little bit more grounded. 
Now bend both knees and plant your feet to take the left foot in the strap, just at the base of the toes. Hold on the strap with two hands. Reach your left heel up, spread your toes a lot. Draw your toes toward your face. See if you can get the back side of the leg really engaged. You're drawing from the heel to the pelvis. You're lifting the kneecap so that the front side of the leg is contracting as the back side of the leg is just expanding. Now see if you can bring your toes just a little bit further into the stretch. Now release your strap and in the same way that we just did, just check it out. As you extend your legs, just fan your feet, moving side to side, and now just relax your legs and just see if you can kind of feel maybe the heat of the stretch, that you feel like the legs are a little bit more energized, maybe a little temperature change in the legs. Let's bend the knees again and take a strap around the right foot as you do in the same way that you just did. Hold on the strap, each side, draw the toes toward your face, spread the toes. See if you can draw the toes just a little bit further on the second time. Now on this time, straighten your left leg. And as you do, can you take the strap in your right hand and hold on, keep the action that you had going on with two hands, but take your left hand to the top of the left thigh. Can you encourage the toes to move just a little bit more toward the top of your mat. And if this feels like too much of a stretch behind the knee, just bend your knee just slightly. The left hand is encouraging the top of the left thigh to draw down the right hand is encouraging the right foot to just go a little bit further in the stretch. Now release and plant your right foot. Take your strap around the left foot. Start holding onto the strap with two hands. And as you press the base of the toes into the strap, spread your toes, draw your toes down toward your face, reach the foot as far as it feels comfortable for you. Now take the strap in the right hand and straighten your right leg. Take the strap in your left hand, free your right hand, and press the top of the right thigh with your right hand. Really press it down. Can you encourage your left toes to reach toward the top of the mat as you get the right thigh to settle down? Again, a slight bend to the knee is fine as long as you and feel like you're getting a lot of lengthening action here on the back side of the leg. Now slowly bend your right knee, bend your left leg and pause here. One more time, create a bridge pose. Press your elbows down, lift your pelvis up, Press your head back. Just get this nice opening in the throat. Breathe in deep and out long. Now slowly release your pelvis to the mat 
and draw over to the right side. Take hold of your left ankle on the right side. And just reach the left knee back for another thigh stretch. Release the foot and come over to the opposite side. Stretch your left arm out so the left arm is a pillow. Bend your right knee. Hold on. and reach the right knee back slightly. And release your right foot. Come up to all fours position. In all fours position, you might want to use your blocks here. And use the blocks in their tallest height. I like starting the practice in that supine way. It just allows you to just be engaged a little bit more. You feel so rooted. So let's continue the practice now that we've lifted up slightly. So now that we're in hands and knees or your hands are on blocks. And step your right foot right between the blocks. Now that you've stretched your thigh quite a bit, just drawing down into a deeper lunge is probably a little bit more accessible to you right now. And as you do, just get this nice fullness in the pose. Walk the blocks back so that the hands are right under the shoulders. You get a nice opening of the upper chest. You're taking your attention to your breath as you just settle deeper into this low lunge. Now let's trade sides. Step your left foot right between your blocks and draw down. And sometimes the knee gets a little fussy in this, so if you need a little padding for your knee, by all means, get some padding for the right knee. Walk your hands back so that the arms support you in finding fullness in the upper chest. As you root down to the earth, from the pelvis to the earth, just notice how you feel such length from the pelvis to the crown of the head. Now release and step the right foot forward. With the right foot forward, this time inch your toes forward with the heel pressing, almost like you're trying to drill the heel into the mat. Just pull back. You're drilling down and pulling back from the heel to the pelvis. Walk your blocks back so that you get this nice stretch to the back side of the leg. And see if you can just uh, get a little bit more stretch by drawing slightly forward. Now we're not rounding the spine here. We're in fact trying to keep the spine pretty neutral. There, there's some rounding, but you're really trying to work the leg. You're drilling down, you're pulling back from the heel to the pelvis. And rise up, come out of the pose. Step your left foot forward. Lift your toes up, spread your toes. Walk your blocks back so that you can get nice and tall. As you draw the toes back, you can slowly draw your heart rather, again, rather than the nose trying to touch the knee, the nose is lifted and it's the heart that's leading the way. Keep pulling from the left kneecap up toward the pelvis. It's a way to engage the front side of the leg to get more length on the back side of the leg. Now release yourself out of the pose. Come to a standing position. You may want blocks. Step your right foot forward. If you've got blocks, it's right between the blocks. Step your left foot back. 
Now park your left heel down nicely and draw your pelvic points so that they're almost parallel to the front of the mat. Place your hands to your low back and just fan your fingers so you're pressing your flesh toward the earth. Hug your elbows in and draw your heart forward and slightly down. Again, we're trying to keep that spine as neutral as possible to give ourselves a little stretch here. Now inhale, rise up. Now lift up the back heel, bend the back knee, try to keep that balanced action on the back leg and do the same thing again. Just bow forward with the right leg straight, the left knee bent. Maybe you can go a little bit further in here, here in the posture. Now inhale, rise up. Now step the back foot forward. Step your right foot back. Park your back heel and as much as possible, bring your right hip forward so that the hip points are roughly parallel. Keep your back heel pressing down. Take your hands to your low back, keeping the back heel pressing down. Just draw down into a forward fold, but see if you can keep the spine nice and elongated. Inhale, lift up. Now bend the right knee. As you bend the right knee, keep the left leg straight. You can lift your right heel pretty high and draw down. Kind of like a curtsy that you're doing. Inhale, lift yourself up. One last thing I'd like to do is use the wall to do a split at the wall. If you don't have a wall, you can imagine that you have a wall and do a forward bend with your hands on blocks and one leg lifted so that you're in the form of a split. Come to all fours position if you've got a wall that you can use. In all fours position, have your hands nice and wide apart. Have your heels right by the baseboard. Lift your pelvis up. Walk your hands a little bit closer to your feet so you're in a very short downward facing dog. Lift your right leg up, tuck your right toes under, walk your hands a little bit closer to your left leg with your right toes tucked under. Get a nice lift to your right heel and draw your heart a little bit closer to your left leg. Release your right foot down. Take your left leg up. Tuck your toes under, walk your hands a little bit closer to your right leg. Draw your heart toward your straight right leg. Just get nice length there. And release your left foot down. So we've done a number of poses to prepare the legs for a full split. So let's do the pinnacle pose. Let's see how we do. Using your blocks to keep that length on the side body, come to all fours position. From all fours position, step your right foot forward. And similar to what we did before in the runner's lunge, Sneak your right foot forward quite a bit and lift your toes up and draw your toes toward your face. Walk your hands back slightly so that you get this nice length of the spine. Now see if you can just move yourself toward a split. Just drop down and just notice with all the action that we did, you can get a little bit closer to the earth. 
Now just pulse up and draw down again, just a little bit. If this is too much of a stretch for the front leg, bend the right knee so that you can just enjoy nice opening here in the pelvic area. And just draw down and just pulse up and draw down. Again, you don't want to go too deep. Just bend the right knee if you have to, to come just a little bit closer in your pose. Let's try that on the opposite side. On this second side, I know my back knee could use a little padding. So I'm going to use a washcloth to get just a little bit more comfort on that back leg. Step your left foot forward, inch the toes forward to come to that runner's lunge. And as you lift the spine, press down through the back toes so you keep a nice engagement in the back leg that we were working so much to really engage. Lengthen through the back leg, lengthen through the front leg. And if you feel like, oh my gosh, that's just too much of a stretch, just bend your left knee. You'll be able to do your version of Hanumanasana, your version of the split. And inhale, rise up. Now come to lie down on your back. Stretch your legs out. And just fan your feet just side to side to let your legs just release. And as you're ready, just softly quietly still the motions. Relax your facial muscles. Relax your arms. In this practice, we started lying down to prepare the front side of the leg in the back side of the leg. We end the practice in the supine position, allowing the legs to just release. Hanumanasana is a pose represents an offering. When you work at the aspects of this pose, you do this as a gesture of offering. your commitment, your devotion to your yoga practice. You come back to the mat again and again. Some poses take weeks, some poses take years, some poses take a lifetime or two.
just come back to the mat. Do your practice. And dissect the poses. Working on the aspects of the poses in a way that works for your body. You do your version of the pose. And at the end of the practice, you take this time to just assimilate what you've done. What you found out about your own body. your breath serves these actions. Thank you for joining me in the practice as we move toward Hanumanasana. Namaste.